Hello, Steven here, and welcome to my video on creating an Apache Cassandra connection and NiFi using a Cassandra session provider. All right, so go, let's get started on this, shall we? Now, first thing we need to do is go set up the control resource. So we go to configure, and then we add a new. And then we look for Cassandra, and you have two options here. You have the Cassandra distributed map caching, which we're not going to use today. And then you have the important one for creating the connection that we need, which is Cassandra session provider. So we select that one and we add it. Let's go ahead and configure it. First things we need to do is provide the contact list, which is a comma separated list of all the uh, nodes inside of the cluster and the reports. So we wanna go ahead and grab those and put those into our list here. And it does accept expression language or parameter context as well. Okay, so we can see in my environment for my sandbox, I'm pointing to the container name and then the port. So if you're not going to a container or something like that, you're going directly to the host, and then you just put the IP address or the uh, domain name for it. Next, uh, so it is, we need to set up our consistently consistency level. So here, <coughs> excuse me, for Apache Cassandra, you have multiple options for setup consistency, uh, meaning that when you interact with it, the fetch data or write data, how many nodes have to respond before you can before you accept that response uh, to confirm that you have the most current data. And in this case, uh, for this one, I'm just gonna set mine up to quorum. So if I have a three node cluster like I do, that means two of them have to respond. And uh, from those two will determine the correct answer. Uh, and then the next thing we have is compression type. That's gonna stay at none. You can set a key space here if you want, but you don't need to. So I don't need to, cause I set the key spaces inside the processors. And then we set the password and username. So uh, the default was Cassandra. And I think I had the password set the time prep for my sandbox. Make sure I did that right. All right, and that's all, that's the minimum that you need to set up in order to get it working. So let's go ahead and apply this. And then we enable it. Now, if this wasn't working correctly, uh, one thing we'd see if we didn't get the password out or something, we would see a error over here indicated by the icon. So if you do have it correct, you'll, you shouldn't see anything and it should be just fine. We can go ahead and close this out now. Let's go ahead and grab our processor. So for this one, all we need to do is confirm that we're working. So we just need to query from Cassandra and we can query one of the system tables. So let's go ahead and say Cassandra. And then under Cassandra, we have three different uh, processors that we can utilize. There's a put Cassandra query language. There's put Cassandra record and then query Cassandra. So the two that I mostly use is the last two, query from Cassandra and then the put Cassandra record. But we're gonna use the query. Let's go ahead and grab something to put this into. All right. And then we can say success. Let's go ahead and I don't think I'll need to worry about those right now. So we'll go ahead and terminate the relationships for failure and retry. And this is just a test. I'm not gonna rename it or anything right now. Uh, scheduling though, one minute. So we don't get too many. We're gonna leave it on all for execution for all the nodes in the cluster. Uh, normally I'd only set this primary because I only want one copy of it. Uh, but in this case, I want to make sure all my nodes can, I can retrieve data from all the nodes or I want to make sure all of my NiFi nodes can execute and, and uh, get the query. So let's go to properties. So in properties, we have a couple things we have to worry about. So first thing is the Cassandra connection provider. We have to populate this. So we take the one we set up for the session provider. We're going to select that. So now it knows how to contact these uh, different nodes in the cluster. And then here's where we set our, we can set our key space. So we didn't do it before, but we're going to do it now. So in this case, it is, ooh, gotta remember here. Um, system, 
is the namespace, and then peers is the table we're going to be querying from, if I remember correctly. Uh, username and password, we should not have to worry about those. So one thing we can do, though, is we can set a consistency level here that will be utilized over the one that we have set inside the session provider. So this can be good for like, um, if you needed to make sure for some reason you needed a different level than what you were using before, like maybe I need to make sure I need all of these to respond. Now granted, I lose consist I, I lose my consistency basically because I would be selecting all, <clears throat> but I could drop it down to one if I wanted it to be quicker and stuff like that. So we'll just leave it on I'll just set it to quorum here. So that's good. And now we go to CQL select query and we're gonna say select all from system.peers. All right, so username's good, password name. Yeah, this should be good because I have it there. We'll, we'll find out in a minute. I believe it's fine. So you can also set the fetch size as well, your max wait time. And everything else is okay. And then your output format. So in here we have the option to set it to Avro or JSON if we want to come out. So we'll just change it to JSON here. And I think we're good. All right, so we have no errors. We can go ahead and execute this and we'll stop it. And we instantly got stuff back right away. So let's go ahead and list this. We'll look at the context here. It looks like we're okay. So here we go. So we queried from the peers table inside the system namespace, and we got our two other peers. So besides the one we're connected to, we can see there's two other peers in the in the uh, cluster, and the details on this. All right. So that's all we had to do here to set this up. Uh, let's go ahead and get out of here. Everything looks good there too. All right, so that is how we create a connection. The same thing if we wanted to put something into Cassandra, uh, we would go ahead and use the put Cassandra record. And if we take a quick look at that one, we can see we have the Cassandra connection provider. So we still populate that. Uh, the, we have a key space and a table name. So we have to populate those. The type of uh, statement we wanna do, insert or update the update keys, if we're doing an update. We have different methods, increment, decrement, set. And then our username and password like before, but like I said in the other one, we're getting it from the session provider, so those are not needed. But we do know our session provider doesn't have a key space provided, so I would have to provide that. And one big difference here for this processor is when we're putting things into it, we you, we have to populate a record reader, so we would have to set that up as well. All right, that's all there is. Talk to you next time.